backs against the wall. Um, let's see whether or not there's any shakeups here in the meta, whether we see any surprises from week one to week two. Kobe, what would you expect to see here? So last time around with these two teams, they were focused very heavily on the AD carry bands as well as the jungle bands. And one of the things that happened was RNG actually first picked the Sejuani, even with the Janna and Lulu both available, where teams have been very quick to you know, jump on the one that's their preference. And, and usually Janna here, uh, as far as the win rates especially, has been taken over. But RNG put a lot of emphasis as well on the front line, which is something in this meta that people have started to kind of go away from. With all the focus on AD carries, they, they don't put as much importance on the crowd control and on the, a well-played front line, which, which really is important for these team fights. And you can see at the bottom of your screens very similar bands to what they threw up last week, but now the RNG is on the red side. They're forced to bring up the Kalista. They're still banning away the Zaya. I'd be surprised if they still banned away the Ivan, but things like Lulu, Tristana, Janna, all available, along with the Javan being taken off by Roll. Yeah, one big change there. G2 takes out the Twitch, uh, which Uzi put to very good use in that late game. As you said, Trist is definitely still available, uh, uh, along with Kogma. So probably those would be the two that we're looking at trading. And G2 jump back on the Lulu. Again, RNG have the option for that Jenna that they have used so effectively. And you would imagine that Royal right now would look to try and get themselves the Sejuani and the Tristana if they're just looking to play meta. And G2 can then answer with a Varus, who we've seen can match the Tristana in the laning phase, especially paired up with the Lulu. And we have to see how well G2 Esports can work around that AD carry if they lock it in. Of course, Ming, three Three games played, three Janners already. The Rek'Sai's locked in for MLXG here on the side of RNG and taking their time as we open up day two of week two. Already gonna see it maybe a little bit more early game here. Warrior Rek'Sai, all the rage at the moment. And uh, MLXG is definitely one of the junglers that at any moment can go for an experience Quint for a quick level three. He can even go for uh, level two ganks. It's, it's definitely a... Uh, uh, a lot of options here for him. Now G2 already setting themselves up for what will be a big team fight scaling engage composition. They should have pressure if they lock in this Drisana. But remember last week they actually banned away the Cogmore from Uzi. This is a guy that's famed for his mechanical prowess and his legendary status throughout making multiple world championships. And now he's putting in a position to carry for his team once again. And one of the reasons I really like RNG actually locking that uh, Kogma in first round here is because they basically have the guaranteed possibility of the third pick Janna for themselves, and Kogma plus Janna is one of the most obscene combinations that we have in the current meta. Arden Sensor is pretty much mandatory right now, and Rage Blade users are the ones that can abuse that the most, and Kogma is yeah. the premier Rage Blade user, so all things really come together when you get that combination, plus the fact of, oh, she has this AoE disengage and can apply it to everybody. All right, so no surprises yet in ban phase one, pick phase one. As we're getting into the second phase of bands, those solo laners now need to start answering questions. Um, Vedius, where do we start looking here? Because expect last week, of course, didn't really play those traditional tanks. We saw the split push options. Um, you know, what else do they start to look towards here? Well, if you're G2 Esports, I'd really like to see them facilitate with another tank. Go for the very classic meta of double tank, double carry, ardent support. And Royal, they can look to get a similar sort of thing. So we're likely going to see a priority on both the Cho'Gath and the Maokai. The only concern for Royal is that right now they don't have any reliable engage. We've seen many Rek'Sai's come into compositions and it's very difficult for them to really force fights because of their single target knockup, which doesn't really classify as a good engage. Yeah, that's the reason we've seen so many of those come from the top lane and very well could be the case here for Let Me. Let Me had some really good Cho'Gath performances uh, specifically and that is definitely still available. Uh, but one other interesting thing with Kog'Maw as well, since he does so much magic damage, is that it's one of the few times when you have possibilities of running attack damage mid laners. That's why G2 banned out the Jace pretty early on there. Uh, Xiaoyu has used that previously. Here they're going to lock in the Syndra. There's some of the crowd control for you. Uh, she at least does have a long range stun and can sometimes actually start up those sieges. And this makes a lot of sense as well. When you think about all the mid lane bands, it kind of forces perks onto something like a Corky. Very safe, scales very well. But G2 then will have a decent mid game spike, but it also gives RNG the option to make sure that Let Me is in a, in a significantly bad top lane matchup. Good takeaway here with the Cho'Gath, I think, for Expect. And this is a guy that we're looking to kind of step up even more for G2 as he's kind of gone under the radar for a lot of the games here at Worlds so far. Yeah, we'll see what sort of performance he puts on the table. Last time around, or last week rather, Shen and Nal left a little bit to be desired, but on the side of G2, 
Corky to round out the team composition. We're seeing this more and more, especially with all the bands. Now, RNG could go for the Shen themselves here. It does fairly well into the Cho'Gao. We saw Longju utilize it fantastically yesterday. And while you think initially Rek'Sai not a great engage, it synergizes very nicely, but instead they're just going to focus going for that tank. He does struggle a little bit up against the Cho'Gath, but he's going to provide plenty of utility, and he has that good flanking option, especially synergized with the Syndra. I really like the Maokai lock in here for RNG at the end with the area that you can control with the ultimate just synergizes so well with the way they want to play the five on five fights, having the Kogma, Syndra, and Janna kind of protect each other in the backside. So this looks like it's going to be, no surprise, a uh, meta draft for both teams, and we might have another one of those long games. And we need to see whether or not G2 can handle themselves this time around. They were so close last week. You heard Jet on the analyst desk talking about some of the early game from G2 Esports. What do you think of how they're going to handle themselves early into mid as we look at the team comp here, Vidyas? Well, I think they have pressure top. I think they have pressure bot. I think mid is fairly even, except Cinder is just kind of obnoxious in the mid lane. So for RNG, a lot of focus is going to be on what can MLXG do. Because one of the big advantages that MLXG has as a player is he is not afraid of anyone. He loves to invade. <laughs> he loves to utilize early game pressure. When you have Syndra in the middle lane, pressure is abundant. The good old double-edged sword of not having fear. <laughs> Sometimes fear can be a healthy thing. It can be, but when you're the three O team in the group, it seems like it's working in favor of Royal Never Give Up. The crowd, you can hear them roaring already. Definitely behind their number two representative, of course, coming up against Europe's number one in G2 Esports. I love seeing the crowd and I love hearing them. And of course, this will be Kicking off day two as G2 Esports take on Royal Never Give Up. Of course, the last time these two teams faced off, it was uh, RNG that managed to pick the game up. Yeah, and uh, just as a reminder, all of Group C games will be played today. We will find out the next two teams to make it into the quarterfinals. But let's focus in on G2 versus RNG, an extremely pivotal matchup going in ahead of today's game. All right, so Pink's already coming down for, you know, possible starts from G2 uh, on this red side. They did see both junglers uh, aware of each other. Now, if you are looking at the junglers as well, as you always should be in the early games, uh, you always kind of take it account of all the crowd control from the lanes. And that is one of the things about the Corky matchup into Syndra. Yes, Corky. We've seen multiple solo kills by Corky players in this tournament, but it's almost always after the Trinity Force uh, on the enemy solo laner. So Syndra, in the early stages, does have CC to actually set up ganks for Rek'Sai quite well. And Perks will have to navigate his lane kingdom a little bit uh, <laughs> more carefully in the early stages. He also has chosen not to go for the cleanse, preferring the later value of the teleport off into a side lane, which means that if Xiao Hu is able to land the stun, you get the immediate follow up from NLXG. That's going to be a very swift kill down onto Perks, and you may find a new king in the middle lane. All right, Xiao Hu, of course, king of Group C already. Going to be helping out MLXG and let me over on the chicken cap. This will give MLXG a little bit of a head start. Is over on the other side, expecting trick, double teaming, working on that blue button. And you've got to pay attention to this Sichuani Chogan combo as well, because it's something that a lot of uh, opponents often forget. In terms of the early game, there's a surprising amount of burst from this Sejuani. When you have so much utility in a Chogath and a low mobility tank in the form of Maokai, you can go for early ganks in the top half of the map if you want to try and set up your tank for success. It can be a bit of a gamble because it leaves open the bottom side map in terms of pressure, and that's going to force Venomithi to play a little bit more reserved. So it, it, there's a big trade-off if Trick decides to invest his time up there. We'll see the decision making is Sven and Mithy doing some aggressive trading there with Uzi and Ming. Uh, so we're checking in on the runes here for MLXG. He does, in fact, have one of those experience quints, but he's going for a full red side clear anyway. So he will be level three and he will end up on the red side. He's fairly healthy and could possibly go affect that lane early on. You know, you mentioned the Cho'Gath, but Maokai also has decent CC for setting up those ganks early on. And that may be where RNG want to get started. Uh, where does MLXG go with this? Expect sticking around in lane. Oh, he's oh, pushing perfect. past the river. This is so risky. Expect got flash available and level two. Double knockup, flashes away. Follow up from Let Me and MLXG. This should be simple. 200 HP and Royal, they back away. Such a good double rupture there from Expect to get out of that alive. Knocks them both up, lands the slow, and then he can flash afterwards for the distance. 
Meanwhile, though, Trick is going to take advantage and get the blue buff counter. Uh, basically, your payment for a top lane gank at this point. Remember what we talked about earlier on. If you invest time top, it gives over pressure to the bottom side of the map. And given that Sven and Mithy have already pushed that wave underneath the tower, it gives Trick the freedom to steal away that blue. So we will get a bit of an experience advantage as Yahoo runs through the river. All right, keeping my eyes there on Xiaohu, whether or not he's moving to the bottom lane. Let me quickly mention that Ming is now the only player in World's Groups who remains deathless. I just want to see whether or not he can keep that streak alive because RNG, they have looked great so far. They definitely have. And now we're going to look to see if he can actually go make use of that burnt flash on top side because he did pay his blue buff in order to burn it. One of the other things that you can do instead of just counter jungling, of course, is leaving behind those wards. And that does help with tracking MLXG. They have the timers on all of his red side camps because you immediately assume that he went Raptors red. Uh, Krug's very easy to assume that. And they just saw him down on the blue quadrant. So they basically have the next minute for MLG kind of mapped out here. And G2 uh, should be able to play safe during that time. But it's MLXG, man. We talked about how he loves to play aggressive. He is kind of that double-edged sword player. And even though G2 should expect where he's going to go, he is that unpredictable aspect of him that, that's always looking to try and get early leads for his team. Yeah, and of course, uh, one of the guys that he's been trying to help out a lot, Shaohu in that middle lane, getting close to level six. Uh, as we've touched on, Perks, of course, getting fairly close himself. Take a little closer look at some of his stats. A 30 KDA on Xiaohu. Uh, pretty phenomenal performance overall. He's also only given up a single death. 81% kill participation on the side of RNG. And as we were looking at Pix and Ban being one of the primary stuns, you know, that AOE zone control, Gonna be some pressure on Shao as you move into this mid game where G2 have shown weaknesses from week one. Also, just coming into the tournament, there were very high hopes for Shao Hu. Many of the analysts rated him very highly on the top 20 world players. Uh, high expectations of him as well. But we have to move away from Shao Hu as you see a gang up in the top lane. All right, as we jump to the top lane, let me's been engaged upon silence, ruptured, and gonna look away. G2 get first blood. This is the combo we were talking about. And also remember that let me had used his flash earlier from the gank from MLXG, and it was trick that is able to early punish rather than RNG. So G2, they get first blood on the board. That's huge for this top lane because uh, Let Me had blown his flash offensively. And we always talk about how offensively blown flashes rarely punish. But a nice return there from Trick is able to get that first blood for G2. G2 maintain 100% first blood across all four of their games. Alex G is going to look for a reply though, but with Valkyrie and Flash, a little optimistic. Plus the wards that Trick left behind on his invade into RNG's red side quadrant of the jungle allow them to see MLXG on that mid lane approach. Here's another look at how it started out though. Rupture lands from expect to start it out and Trick knows there's no flash on let me so it's going to be an easy flash in for him and get the stun. I don't know why Trick decided to use his flash there. Perhaps he just wanted to guarantee the crowd control uh, but Regardless, he will land that CC, they will get the kill, and G2 off to a good start, but not that significant of a lead just yet. No, it really isn't. Uh, of course, let me has got a small CS advantage, thanks to that gank earlier in the day. MLXG clearing out fairly well. Sven and Uzi, by the way, they have backed after this six and a half minute laning phase. The cull is yet to prop for Sven. He's got himself a big friendly sword to go up against the pickaxe as well as double daggers on the side of Uzi. Yeah, uh, Sven has definitely been one of the early adopters of the call uh, as far as the, the way the meta has been been uh, trending here. And he actually has been playing it very well in the early games. A lot of good stats for Sven and Mithy. And we have to look back at the last time these two AD carries matched up because Sven, he was all about that early game dominance. He had a pretty significant CS advantage over his lane opponent, but things really started to shift from the team fight. And of course, that's their average CSDs across groups. The uh, TF KDA is the team fight KDA, and that is uh, any situation where there's a four versus four or more. So 4v4s, 4v5s, 5v5s. Uzi, just with a casual 15 team fight KDA, it helps when you're on the 3 0 team, of course. It definitely also brings up the memory of that fight around Baron, where he just came in and wiped the entire team of G2 and really started to shine. Uh, memory or nightmare, depending on your <laughs> perspective, of course. Mithy and Spin deciding to go forward, rocket jumping backwards as Ming was setting up that Howling Gale to interrupt. Good chunk of damage down into Sven, no summoners blown yet. And Mithy, well actually this whole bottom lane getting closer to their ultimates. There we go, just dinging for Uzi and Ming, slightly ahead of G2's duo lane. So now the question is, 
when did G2 start investing their resources bot side, or do they even bother? Because their composition does scale well, but so does RNGs. Both teams have a big frontline tank, both have hyperscaling AD carries, but you always look at that Cogmore and you think, in the late game, he's a really terrifying champion to deal with, especially when he's backed up by a Janna, who's kind of the queen of Peel in the current meta game. Queen of Peel, fourth game in a row for RNG, and, and in terms of week one performances, it was G2's mid-game decision-making, mid-game shot-calling that arguably cost them several games. Let's see how well they have improved in this trick. Throws out the Glacial Prison. That's going to get the flash from Xiaohu. Good reaction time from RNG's mid laner. Yeah, good reaction time. Also, always a worthwhile trade for Sejuani. You know, slightly low cooldown there on the ultimate. Um, and Xiaohu, you have the two options there. Uh, since there's no follow-up CC, he could have instantly cleansed it as soon as it hit, but he then probably would have taken more damage from at least a Foss Bomb or something, uh, maybe an auto attack from Perks with the uh, package. So exactly. he immediately wants to flash out of there. Doesn't want anything crazy to happen. I think it was the package that he was truly scared of. And also, you talked earlier on in the game about how we've seen Corky's get solo kills down onto Syndra. Having that flash not available is going to give G2 a big advantage. Just now, G2 won't down for the dragon. All right, dragon starts off by MLXG. Takes a lot of damage. Void Rush comes out. Dragon tax perks as well. MLXG gets away. Perks gets the backup of Miffy, and all of a sudden G2 might be smiting this one down. Teleport cancelled from Expect as Trick secures it. Can RNG do anything on the back end? Perks takes a chunk of damage as RNG back away. G2 get first dragon. Yeah, that was a slick escape from MLXG, but we got a glimpse of the double-edged sword there. G2 happy to slip in and take that objective. As you said, it did come out of cost though. So teleports will be desynced. And with Perks using his to get back to lane now, there is actually going to be a TP advantage for RNG. And they have the opportunity to force things down in the bottom lane. You can see that Uzi has a fairly healthy CS advantage in the bottom lane. MLXG also poised and ready with his uh, skirmisher saber to look for these kind of early fights. And they could try and force something down in the bottom lane as MLXG is already making his way there. All right, Void Rush is on cooldown though. Let's see how they're gonna try to stick to target. Xiaohu coming around through the river. No flash available. Spin and Mithy. Summon a heal already used. The Howling Gale connects. Spins. Throwing out the Buster Shot. Interrupts the rocket jump. Now Spins in trouble. That's RNG with the first kill of the game. And they back away. RNG don't even need the teleport because they burst Mithy down before he can even use his ulti. Getting that crucial kill onto Mithy and also setting up their bottom lane for success is a great way for RNG to answer back the first blood. Oh, MLXG, he's been spotted. Trick's flashed over for this one, but there's a turret. Now all of a sudden, Trick is well, he's used to flash, didn't really get anything for it. It looks like MLXG with some quick reactions there was, was ready for that. As soon as the flash comes over and the ult is in the air, he clicks on the tunnel. So even though the stun lands, still slides on out. And I still have horror memories of uh, Sven getting caught by those uh, Sejuani ultimates last week. But here's a replay of RNG's first kill. Now, keep your eyes on the vision on the minimap. They ping out Syndra and that's actually what makes them realize they're in trouble. Unfortunately for them, it's a little too late as MLXG gets the knock up onto Lulu, preventing Mithy from actually being able to use the ult on himself. Maybe he should have done it a little preemptively. You can debate that for days, but the point is RNG get the kill. They are still a little bit behind on goal. All right, Xiao, who's now being surrounded by several members of G2. Valk forward comes up. Very good stun from Scat of the Week. Perks and Mithy not going to be able to do anything more. It's a 700 gold lead for G2 Esports. They've got themselves the first dragon, the first blood. No real uh, control on the tower damage yet. However, we're going into this mid game on fairly even footing. I really do like this first purchase that I'm seeing from Expect. You know, he was the guy that got the first blood for G2, so a lot of extra money. Adaptive Helm is so good versus RNG team. Works well versus Syndra, uh, works well versus Kogma auto attacks even, and has magic resist for his lane opponent. So kind of covering a lot of bases there and spending that early money effectively. On the bottom side, however, we may be in for some action. Yeah, action or the tower. Minion wave going to be the focus here. Sven uses that satchel just to try blow up the wave. Belt forward again from Perks. He's looking for Ming. That's going to be a summoner heal. Eye of the Storm buying some time, waiting for that E to time out. Trick got the prison. Ming is down. Perks is now on the board. Uzi gets shut down as well as Sven gets the second. G2 are able to answer as 
RNG try to commit to that tier one in the bottom lane. G2 now may be able to get themselves the first tower of the game. That juicy, juicy first turret bonus. One more auto attack and RNG could have had it, but G2 get the kills. Huge punish right here, and they turn it right back around in their faces. Last week, Perk said he was going to silence Wuhan, and he does by killing Ming for the first time in Worlds groups. G2 Esports accelerate their lead just like that to 3,000 gold. So keep your eyes on the minimap once again. No G2 recognize the hard commitment from RNG, but also note the positioning of Xiaohu. He cannot follow perks. It is so easy for G2 to force the three versus four, but the flash over the knockup into the hard engage from Trick allowed G2 to catch Ming off guard. They get themselves the double kill and they get themselves the first half. As we come out of the replay, uh, Kobe, I need to just give a little bit of context in your Europe, I love tracking some weird and wonderful dragon stats. Oh it's just a words. personal no. thing of mine. No. You see this well mountain of drake. <laughs> uh, the, the next mountain drake will be the first mountain drake secured, if killed, by any team in this group. Not one of the four teams playing today have secured themselves a mountain drake. I find that interesting. RNG, not with RNG, or maybe it is. It's going to be taking those barons and towers all the faster. The game's going to get faster, Trevor. Great analysis there. I just love those quick stats about random dragons. You know, they just really excite me. Back to the regularly scheduled programming. And G2 Esports, they've got that tower. They're now looking to respond as RNG through the dual lane top. Exactly that. So. We're looking at what G2 are now trying to do with their bottom lane, because it looks like they're grouping up as a four-man in the middle lane. Syndra is now just arriving as Expect make his, his way up top. I feel like G2 could just hard commit to this tower. Flash is back up for Xiaohu, but he doesn't feel confident to be able to defend. Tower number two going to be secured. Sven and Mithy were rotated around the map throughout week one of groups as tower taking menaces. And they're on the same path. The package is used to get into the pit. MLXG borrows out the prediction from Trick and Perks gets another. They turn their attention to Herald and G2 Esports. They might be on the way to a win. Fantastic punish from G2 onto MLXG. He still had the flash, but I don't think he had vision of Trick. Because of that, Trick saw the burrow, he lands the ult, they secure another kill, and they're gonna get a Rift Herald off the back of it. This is quite the snowball here for G2, taking so many objectives in a very, very quick amount of time. Now there's only one outer turret left up. Another Drake, as you said, the mountain one is about to come up. We'll see if they can use the Rift Herald in conjunction uh, with starting that one up. But we're also seeing how much G2 has learned from last week because they were in a very similar position. They took two outer towers and they were making their way towards the third. They had the Rift Herald too, and that that's when Sven got caught out of position. But so far, they definitely didn't get this many kills, and this is where they were able to find it. All right, look at the replay here. MLXG on the lower health. Rek'Sai had vision. Problem with the, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Rek'Sai, as soon as you start the tunnel, you know where exactly where he's gonna, where she's going to end up. It's a fixed distance, so. You're also animation locked, I believe, so he couldn't flash out the middle of that too, which meant that he was kind of destined for death after he chose the tunnel. Well, that means G2 have got themselves a sizable lead. It was around 3,000 gold. Last week, they had an average gold lead of 1,700 at 15 minutes, uh, an average of 1,500 at 20 minutes, and that's a unique Herald spawn. That wasn't exactly what I meant with using the Rift Herald yeah. in conjunction <laughs> with taking the Drake, but they're going to get both at once, and Rift Herald is going straight for that bottom turret. One interesting thing with the Rift Herald, you can backdoor with it. If you spawn it behind a minion wave, it gets to ignore that minion wave and could go straight for the turrets. That's why people can actually use that uh, to go and take off the backdoor bonus. If you have a champion there as well, then you usually get to finish the turret. But since they stayed on Drake, uh, it's just going to get most of the health. Wow, that's a good amount of chip damage on that inner turret. And we start to enter the trouble, the danger zone for G2, at least from the week one performance. How much can they learn from last week to this week? How much clearer can the communication get? Although, to be fair, this is a larger lead than we really saw as often last week. Now, the biggest difference between last week and this week is last week, G2 had a Gnar in the top lane and a Rek'Sai in the jungle. So there was so much more emphasis on them snowballing an early lead because in the late game, they didn't have a good front line, they didn't have an easy way to engage, and their late game carries were not... Oh, they're pulling the trigger. Teleport's coming in for Let Me, and RNG want to cut them off. Expect is trying to match. I can't quite see where he's coming. Straight into the lane. Four members of G2. They support 
now coming from the river. Take a look at Letme getting chunked down. Buster shot still available for Spin to reset any fight. Silence onto Letme. Resets available. Rocker jumped forward as MLXG tunnels out to safety. Rupture's going to be needed from Expert. Get some CC down. Uzi's bark is not as much as his bite. Perks jumps forward, drops a fast bomb in Uzi's face. And now G2, they reckon they want to retreat. They re engage the three man stun. MLXG shuts down Perks. Silence comes up from the feral screen. Sven continues to push forward. Got the heels and the shields from Lulu. Now G2 are routed, are running. The Void Rush comes out. Body block. Trick looking for the stun. MLXG's double-edged sword stabs himself. Now expect as the target from Uzi. Running low on mana. The extended fight ends in a two for one. Yeah, problem with Rexar going in there. After you jump out with your ultimate, can't get a knockup on the way out. Goes down and an extra kill over to G2 after RNG had them on the run. But what a long fight from both teams. It felt like G2 had the initial setup. They were the ones that were in the advantageous position. And keep your eyes on the TP that we see from Initially, Expect was extremely far away, but then this TP from Perks, because he makes it difficult for Let Me to really commit. He's kind of left out to try, and this is where things start to get messy. I think it is a good engagement there uh, from Let Me to try and take advantage of the misposition, but he gets focused because there's a slight distance advantage there, and the DPS from G2 are closer, so they immediately burn down the tank. But then when Expect flashes in and Perks bounces forward, uh, they kind of expose themselves a little bit here. Good ultimate into stun there from Xiaohu to cut off the rest of the team and allow RNG to focus on perks. We also saw what we've seen many times from G2, which was a breakdown in communication at the mid-game. Trick was starting to back while they were flashing in for an engagement, and because of this disjointedness, it allowed RNG to come back in, get a kill, but then RNG overcommit, and G2 get the punish. Yeah, Rek'Sai Ultimate, not really a good engagement tool, re-engagement, because you end up above ground, plus then the silence, and there, there weren't many options for him after he decided to use that. G2 back out on the field. They still have a very significant gold advantage, and now in the package, RNG had to be fairly wary about uh, some offensive moves. 4,000 gold lead and two dragons in the bank at 20 minutes. Take a look at the itemization, gents. It's double items for Sven. Eye Edge as well as Static Ship. Got himself the Zeal. Trinity Force has been sitting with perks for a touch. Righteous Glory for Expect. Over on the other side, it's really one and a half items. Yeah. So there's a big power uh, uh, trough on the RNG side in contrast to G2. And remember what we were talking about with regards to engage. G2 have a lot of it. RNG are relying very much on a flank, which let me now has less options for as an engage has to start. Another great prison. Ming is shut down for the second time in the tournament. Uzi is blown up under the tower as the explosive charge helps out. That's the third tower of the game. Extends the gold lead to 6k. Kobe, earlier in the day, you and I were saying, you know what's really good in this meta? CC and tanks. And right now, Trick is proving why as they set themselves up for the Baron. No hesitation here from G2 on starting up this Baron. They do have the feast from Expect, so you would assume if all things go to plan that he'll be able to, uh, you know, just get that thousand true damage off. We're about to find out very close. 1600 HP looking for the burst, and it is secured by G2. Got to hype up the potential steal, but that is now a monumental advantage for the number one EU LCSC. Now, G2, they simply group up top and they use the fact that Lemmy doesn't have the TP to come in for the collapse. Ming is super squishy. He doesn't have flash. Oh, he does even have flash. He doesn't see the play happening. And G2, very swift dive in the top tower. You know what's becoming extremely effective in this meta is targeting the support player. Because by rushing Ardent Sensor and investing so much in gold generation, the, the supports are inherently extremely squishy. Yes. And oftentimes, the best targets if you take out the support, you take out the Art and Sensor, which is the heart of the team fight nowadays, and uh, they jumped right on him. So, good move there. Now we'll see what they can do with the Baron. All right, Sven with that third item completed, by the way. Oh Rapid fire word. cannon. Trick decides to go in onto Xiaohu. The tower's also below. Sven and Perks just blow up. Let me in the top lane. Uh, they're not done sieging yet. RNG are now looking at losing an inhibitor tower. G2 Esports at 22 minutes, they've come to play. Inhibitor turret is down. Inhibitor will be the focus as well. And this will stun not only Wuhan, but many, many onlookers. This was the G2 that a lot of European fans were expecting to see.
and they're showing up in game one. G2 on track to get the best world record they've ever had. <laughs> Fantastic snowball of the early game from G2. This is so different from what they were able to do last week because it was in the mid game. They had the early lead. They made one bad decision and RNG were very quick to punish. But G2 this time have not given RNG those options. And I think punish is something I have to reiterate. It's felt like a few members of RNG have been caught out, which we didn't really see a lot last week. I felt they were in the lead a lot better. Right, let's see. Glacial Prison is available for Trick if wanted. Throws it as somewhat of a zoning tool. Uzi takes a big chunk of damage as the inhibitor tower gets poked down. And G2, they've still got a minute and a half on Baron. Rupture on Letme is not going to be the engage tool that they're looking for, Bedias, but the tower's the focus. Ooh, G2, they're very close, but engage. All right, there's the stun comes down. The MLXG throws out the Void Rush, dashes out, gets feasted, I believe, by Expect. Silence now comes down to Xiao Hu. He uses the cleanse, caught up by the Rupture. Follow up, the tower's still not dead. Sven leaps forward with the Rocket Jump. They're in a five on three, and they've got Baron and Powered Minions in the base. With Baron and 20 plus second death timers on two members of RNG. G2 can just end it right now, or at least look to. Well, gonna get some damage down onto those Nexus turrets. Let me is just not tanky enough. He does not have enough armor to deal with Sven right now. The Nexus turret gets chunked down by that Tristana E. Let me continues to take some poke. Three seconds before MLXG is back up and available. The first Nexus turret is down, and Perks lives up to his word. Shy to, uh, silencing Wuhan as they're one tower away from the Nexus. Fantastic performance from G2 overall. Rather than split up the team, they decide to just group. RNG get desperate, they realize they have to try and force an engage. They go on to Sven, but he just flashes behind his front line and all hell breaks loose for RNG. They gradually pick them off one by one and get themselves their second inhibitor. Yeah, RNG definitely had a chance to right the ship earlier in the game, namely around that top lane team fight. I think it was still fairly close and they have a decent you know, scaling to, to rely upon and the Jenna Cogma to come back. But at this point, you can see inside the base during that fight, G2 have snowballed so effectively so early on that it becomes very difficult for RNG to actually come out ahead in one of those team fights, even if they're the ones to try and you know, start it off. I keep bringing the attention to Sven's itemization. It's not like a bit of a broken record, but Guardian Angel plus two zeal items and Eye Edge at 25 minutes? Good luck dealing with that. Exactly. He's so far ahead. He already has his crit multipliers that he has the luxury of getting this Guardian Angel this early on. It's one of the reasons why if you look up statistics for, for items on a lot of the websites that are popular now, uh, GA has one of the highest win rates on almost any champion. It's because people get it. <laughs> when they're so far ahead, they're like, oh, good. You want to kill me? I, it's not going to break my streak. He, you know, he hasn't died yet. He wants to keep his deathless streak going for the game. And it looks like he might be able to do that. So much of a win more item in the new version of the Guardian Angel, but at 25 minutes with G2 looking likely to close this game out, this blows the group wide open. With RNG sitting at a potential 3-1 and one record and G2 going 2-2, two and two, it now makes every single game from here on out so much spicier. But we've seen teams in this position before, Quick Shot. You only have to look back to yesterday where we thought the game was over for Gigabyte Marines, and then teams have gotten miraculous team fights to keep the game alive. So I never really want to count a Worlds team out just yet. Oh, I agree. 13,000 gold supers in the base. I'm gonna count RNG. That's a lie. <laughs> he wants to. Yeah. I can see it in his eyes. <laughs> but I just, I think it's very exciting for the rest of the games. Of course, Samsung Galaxy taking on 1907 Fenerbahce next. We'll see what that record does. Regardless, inhibitor turrets in the top lane still barely, barely standing. And G2 Esports gonna usher in those super minions to the inhibitor. Wuhan is starting to cheer and celebrate and give some support to their hometown heroes in RNG. But G2, they're just looking to end the game. Five members are topside, and Burks is on the Nexus. Oh, G2, they're shutting it down. Regardless of what happens, the inhibitor turret now falls. Expect and Perks back away. They are pulling RNG in too many directions. Trick gets a stun up onto Let Me. Still simply not tanky enough to deal with the damage that G2 is putting out. The third inhibitor will fall. Looking at the player cams, G2 Esports on the verge of picking up the win. They miss. They so desperately want a last-ditch effort engaged from RNG. Two-man knock-up into the silence. The front line is dying. Let me is gone. G2 focusing down the Nexus. And G2 Esports demolish RNG. G2 
with a very convincing game over RNG. Herc successfully silences the crowd as they had a, a very impressive performance. Just look at the smiles on their faces. Very happy with how they executed. They seem to clear up their mid-game decisions, but you have to go back to that bot play. RNG committing to that early tower. G2 getting the quick punish, and then that's where the momentum really kicked in for G2. That was a huge gold swing that gave them the upper hand and really secured it for them. But one of the most interesting things now is what this does to the group overall. Going into yesterday, people were like, oh yeah, the first three games will probably determine most of the group. Coming into today, some people were even saying similar things, but once again, we've got some more uh, excitement in store for you guys. It's just really, really interesting to see, and now we get to see how do RNG bounce back? You know, last week was incredible confidence, momentum. It felt like it was, you know, day to day, each of their games, arguably progressively more impressive and, and, and more amazing to behold. Let's see what they do. Let's see how they handle themselves as they they suffer an extremely heavy-handed defeat on a day where they have to play three opponents with very little time to adjust, very little time to get over that sort of crush. Yeah, today is the day that stamina is tested. Yes. You know, the first week of group stages, they're kind of spread out, and you get a little bit more prep, but today, you got to go to the long haul. Stamina and mentality. Let's see how they bounce back. G2 pulled off a dominant win against RNG. Let's hand it to Dash and find out whether or not the analysts regret their predictions from the early in the day. Thank you very much. Whoa, Quick whoa, shot. Whoa. It's good. I feel great. <laughs> one game. Whoa. Yeah. One game. I was saying Samsung wasn't playing well. I said RNG was probably going to be out. They're still going to yeah. make it out of the wait group, man. Till, wait till game two to flame yeah. my analyst. Quick Samsung shot. Samsung will still win that game. I was going to say game was... three. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can talk. All right, all right. But here's the thing. Group C doing everything in their power to make it just as interesting as Group B's day yesterday. G2 with the victory over RNG really does make it a three-horse race for the knockout stages. Yeah, and that's what we've been saying about this group from the start. Yes, we predicted the teams that were leading the group to make it out of it, but G2 is trying to make it a much more dynamic conversation. If they now beat 1907 as well as Samsung, there is a very good chance that they will get out of this group. That will put them at four wins and also keep the possibility of that three-way tie alive. And they did it by cleaning up the style that was so effective against RNG the first time around. Game number one against RNG, they got another very early lead. They relied on the Trishana, were bouncing, going through the towers. And game two, they just uh, executed so much better in the mid-game on it. And I like how you call it game one and game two because you can see pick and ban from this game. And it's pretty similar, honestly, mm -hmm. to what we saw in terms of style. It's not Twitch Janna, but it's mm -hmm. definitely another one of these Janna outscale lanes. You think back to what happened last time, G2 got a lead. But I know that you and I were sitting there, Jet, saying it's similar, but it was different in terms of how the lead came through, both in how it came through and how G2 played around it. Because this was much more about G2 making smart calls, but RNG kind of accelerating their own demise yeah. by making poor ones. And there were a few little things that told the difference of whether or not G2 had a large enough gold lead with which to snowball that weren't happening in the first game. The first game, we complimented RNG for doing a lot to minimize their losses and not making little mistakes. But this game, they did make a few little mistakes. The gank in the top lane is the first one that I want to go over, where they both burn flashes and they use the Twisted Advance early on the Maokai. That should be safe for post-flash so you can lock down. Expect played this perfectly considering the circumstances, waiting for the rupture slow before his flash to know that they couldn't follow through. That expended early pressure. Secondly, this was a greedy play while Cinder was top lane, and if you're making the greedy play, you have to last hit the turret. Exactly. Last week, you would not have seen Xiaohe moving top side. It's been all about RNG getting a lead in mid and then helping out his team, but this time, he leaves the fight, and it ends up right there just being they're not going to have coverage. Honestly, Kog'Maw at that point, maybe he should just greed and kill the turret because returning to it was so hard. But these are the mistakes that RNG and, frankly, LPL teams make all of the time, and they find so many of their victories around their team fighting. This time around, RNG didn't have an even goal. They didn't have a gold lead, so they came into that big fight up into the top side and just got blown out. I mean, and it shows, right, just a couple of those mistakes. We only highlighted two mistakes, but the gold swing there from that bot lane play and being able to take a turret and some kills for G2 and they know how to play from ahead. And that's the other difference from week one, because if you look at their early game stats and their turret destruction week one, they were also very good then. It was what they did after when they taken the two turrets, getting the pick top lane, killing the bottom lane, taking Baron, doing everything right after they killed the first three turrets of the game. And your point is factually true, Jad. They got ahead, they started rotating around the stun. I'm talking about last week. They got a lead. The game started out a little bit from a couple of small mistakes and positioning from Sven. And by the time we saw fights, 
Uzi had items. There were still fights in this game where Uzi did a lot of damage, but he was never at item parity. We ended the game with two item Uzi, just the Ginsu's Rage Blade and also like the Hurricane. Four items. Four then. items, including a Snowball GA, just to say, we're losing, we're locking out the game here. You don't buy Guardian Angel usually on AD carry, because think about 50 minutes. AD carry dies once. He's dying again, realistically, mm -hmm. right? His front line isn't going to be there to peel for him. You die it to close the game. And when you're two items ahead, doesn't matter if Sven has been in slightly poorer form previously, you're going to close it out. Yeah, and when we talk about predictions and the difference between week one and week two, Frost, this is where it's really going to be tested for RNG because, sure, they can drop a game. They don't need to go 6-0 in order to win this group. They need to be able to recover six hours from now and beat Samsung because if they do that, they're absolutely fine. So the question is, do they tilt? after this 27 minute, 55 second loss to G2. So I want to ask you, Frost, how does RNG recover? Where do they fix their mistakes? You put the magnifying glass on Uzi himself. I've said it before and I'll say it again. In the past, this guy has crumbled. You know, we've seen him be very emotional on stage. He's had to have the co coach come out, get down next to him and really comfort him. So far though, we've also seen Uzi grow up on stage and now he doesn't have those meltdowns anymore. He's actually an anchor, a rock for this team. So the loss, it's not the victories where Uzi is the legend. It's in the loss and the ability to bounce back that he will cement his legacy in front of this home crowd. On the shoulders of the veteran for RNG. G2 gave RNG their first loss at Worlds 2017. Let's head over to Shocks and hear from their support. Thank you very much, guys. I'm here with Mithy after a big victory for G2 over RNG, putting them at 2-2 two and two in the group. A repeat, obviously, of the game last week where you guys showed a good performance as well but didn't manage to close it out. What was different today? Um, I think our draft was easier to pull off and we didn't make the mistakes that we made in the mid game this time around. So yeah, we just we were very aware of what they wanted, like how they wanted to play and what they wanted to do to like come back in the games and both their comebacks didn't really pay off because we played well against them and then they just got rolled over at some point. Uh, you guys all had a very good performance. We heard you talking in a broadcast interview earlier about how you weren't particularly that satisfied with your own performance last week. Why do you think that is? What do you think's changed? Um, I think uh, I'd say the pressure got to me a little bit because I was either too focused on my laning phase or too focused on the map and then not paying attention to my lane or just like a little bit shaky and missing things I normally don't miss during practice and so on. So I was just not playing how I normally play. But uh, I think basically yesterday I just told myself that uh, no matter what happens, like I'm happy with the team. So. Uh, no, I'm just playing with no pressure, all the team is, and now we're playing really great, so I'm really happy. Yeah, very good indeed. Just one more thing about that, your own performance. Obviously, back in the EU Finals, you were playing Alistar and practically engaging everything on your own to win games there, even though the team was also playing well. Is that change maybe also affecting you? or? Uh, no, no. Like uh, uh, Trick is super good at engaging. He's always been playing very well on ch Tank Champions, so when the meta shifted the tanks, it was like we were all really happy in, uh, I mean, uh, before finals and we were playing two tanks then. And now, I mean, we we're playing three tanks then, now we're playing two. It doesn't really change too much. I just shield them and just cheer for them from the side lane. So, uh, yeah, it's for me, it's not a problem to play sensor champs. As long as you just trust your teammates, then you're good to go. Well, you seem quite happy, big smiles, and you guys played fantastically. It's going to come down to a couple of very important matches that Samsung won also. So how are you feeling for the rest of the day? Do you feel you're focused enough to go into the next round? Definitely feeling focused. I think our practice has been very good. We, we've had like our ups and downs, but we've pretty convincingly come back from them in terms of how we've talked to each other, how we've like solved problems, and just like I really think we've been a really good team this, this boot camp. So yeah, no matter what happens, I'll be really happy. Well, fantastic talking to you. Thank you very much, Mithy. We are going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more action. Don't go anywhere.